I'm often asked how did I start doing angel cards and um, and then I was thinking of the answer and I could say well it's when I started working at Ragdo Hall um, that I started to do the cards um, but I think it goes back much further than that to when I was a little girl and when I was um, three years old I went to live with my grandparents my nana and grandpa in Chedworth and uh, my great granny Keen was still alive and she was somebody who I would so love to sit down with and have a cup of tea and a slice of cake with and a conversation and talk about her experiences and her knowledge and her wisdom because um, she was a psychic and she was a medium not in the sense of like I think people come into our house but she was somebody with a, with a second sight in a knowing and it was always a little bit of um, and I don't know it wasn't a joke um, but I always wanted to be a healer when I was a little girl and I was always encouraged to place my hands on you know even my great uncle Tut and I remember one particular day going to visit my great granny Keen in a nursing home and she said to me, see that lady over there, just go and sit next to her and place your hands on her hands and give her, you know, some healing. And I did. And that's my earliest experience and memory of like doing healing around the age of four, three or four. And it's something that has stayed with me all through my life up to the age where I went to Australia and then it all was put to one side which was a shame because now knowing about Australia and yeah Aborigine and dreaming it would have been a phenomenal experience but it was an experience I was never meant to to um, live or experience. So growing up in this beautiful rural village of Chedworth I was free to roam and I spent many days just laying against a beech tree, looking at the sky, watching the um, clouds go by and, and just listening to the sound and the rustle of the trees and hearing the voice, which now I know it was the green man and the green woman. And um, it was magical. It was a magical time. I, you know, my playground was the nature spirits. My freedom was my pushback, my best friend Clive, and just connecting to those realms um, that are very much real. So yeah, it was an amazing opportunity to really go and work at Ragdale in 2002, but, but it wasn't until around 2009 that I said to them, can I do the age of cards? And that's why I found my feet and um, my passion, my calling, my bliss, and leaning into those I, you know, was taught by the unseen beings and the unseen reality and of how to read the cards. And, um, you know, I remember in the early days thinking, you know, quite scared of, you know, what would people think of me? It was like an unknown doing angel cards at this prestigious spa in Mountain Mowbray um, and wanting to get it right, you know. And they started off like with 25 minute readings in the atrium and the cards made so much sense to people that they would cry. Um, and then so we started doing them in the room and it was I was fully booked with 25 minute readings. And then eventually over time, I started doing them like a 40 minute reading in an hour slot um, which gave me time but anyone who's been to a card reading with me would know that I was to give more than I'm meant to so it wouldn't be to 40 minutes it would be more likely a 50 55 minute reading and then when lockdown occurred um, you know at that stage I was doing about 33 card readings in a month and I was only working 9.30 to 3.30, four days a week. So it's quite intense. But when lockdown occurred, um, you know, I couldn't just 
sit back in your big cake, it's all to sleep. I had to do the card reading gloves and it was my passion. And it's something that's in me. So I continued to do card readings. I didn't know about Zoom at that stage. <clears throat> I would do written card readings until my friend eventually said doing them via Zoom, which I did do. And um, and I'm continuing still to do them. It's t uh, March 2023 and I'm still doing card readings via Zoom um, and also in person and also back at Ragdale Hall. Uh, the future will always be the card readings unless unless something tells me something else. So the cards I do, I don't predict the future. The future's not set in stone. Um, I don't want to predict the future. I don't want to see things because if you can see things you will see the good and you'll see the not so good and I don't want to see that. The cards I use is for empowerment. What is it you need to know right now that's going to help you on your path and empower you to make the right decisions and lead a life that is one of value to you. How can you get the most out of your life? What is it that's calling you? Which corner, which road, which path do you need to look at? Now that's the power of the cards. That's the power of turning to, to them. It's unlocking the knowledge and wisdom within. And also confirming things that you're thinking, yeah, I'm really interested. Um, and then the cards say do it. And it's like confirmation to do something. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that about the cards. <clears throat> also, I want to share about the readings. Um, what, when was it? I was 28 in June. And I first discovered Reiki in the May. Um, when she was just about to turn three. And um, it changed my life. It empowered me, but uh, I went on to train level one, level two, and then the teacher level. And I taught many student students over the years. I've done Reiki at Ragdale. But uh, my style of healing is changing. Like everything should never stay the same. We should always, you know, move like water. So I'm moving away from the Reiki energy and uh, moving back um, into that path when I was about four year old, doing the healing and connecting to that healing energy. And um, there is a massive difference in the two styles. One star, I feel more at ease at home and afterwards I'm not drained. Um, I'm working more with the intuition, more with the colours again and more with the divine energy. So I'm lucky and I'm grateful that I have a room now that I can do treatments and I'm grateful for the new clients that come into my life and seeing the difference it's making for them. So I just want to end this video and with saying, and I, I will do more videos on whatever you want me to do and probably talk more in depth into the cards and also into the healing. But what I will say to you is don't fall into that trap of just the lessons, you know, the hurts, the past, just draw a line underneath that and follow your bliss and your talents, follow the things that excite you, ignite your passion, intrigue you and um, always put that request to the guides. That love you in this realm 
what is it that I'm here to do? What is, how can I be of service? And when you start asking those questions, the doors open and all that you need comes your way. So, send me lots of love and um, thank you for listening. As always, please hit that button of like and subscribe because when it says to YouTube, send my videos to other people. And um, yeah, until next time, take care and lots of love, always.